Hello, friends. Welcome to This Day in Jack Benny. I'm John Henderson. This episode is from November 29th, 1953. At this point, Phil Harris had left the show, though he still had his own radio show. When the average husband refers to his better half, he means his wife. To fill his better half is his left profile. <laughs> oh, hiya, honey. What are you looking at? Oh, Phil, the, the prints of our new pictures just arrived. Let me see them. You look wonderful, Alice. But I don't know about me. Somehow, pictures don't do me justice. <laughs> like Phil. No, honey, I mean it. Now, look at this one. Look. He's got that boyish twinkle in my eyes, but... Well, he didn't capture my lovable, devil-may-care smile. Phil Harris was replaced as the band leader character by Bob Crosby, who was the brother of the famous singer Bing Crosby. Bing's face could be seen in full color in newspaper ads for Minute Maid orange juice, with a speech bubble saying, Take it from me, it's delicious. An older and more obscure product was an herbal remedy for weakness, aching, and any other female issues. Lydia Pinkham's vegetable compound, a woman's tonic. This episode comes just after Thanksgiving. On television, you could see Dinah Shore celebrating the holiday. You know, there are all kinds of songs. When the Christmas season comes around, Easter, you have Easter parade. But there really isn't a Thanksgiving song. Meanwhile, on the radio, not only were the stars of programs household names, the announcers were well-known as well, like Harry Von Zell. B.F. Goodrich announces a sensationally new kind of truck tire. And Jimmy Wallington. Brought to you by Dentine, the gum with breathtaking flavor. And Beeman's Pepsin, the gum that's great to chew and good for your digestion, too. Then there was the man of a thousand voices, Mel Blanc. Now we're on Vine Street looking toward Hollywood Boulevard. There's the West Coast headquarters for ABC. And on a corner of Sunset and Vine is NBC. He's probably best known for his cartoon characters, like Bugs Bunny. No matter what the others have, I'm glad that I'm Bugs Bunny. And Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> That's the Woody Woodpecker song. I cut a few holes in a tree too. And finally, this episode has a subtle reference to burlesque, incorporating feathers or balloons, usually to a song like this, A Pretty Girl is Like a Melody. If you'd like to contact me, you can email jackbennypodcast at gmail.com or on Twitter, it's at this day Benny. And enjoy the show. The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting, fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike. Friends, this is Don Wilson to tell you that Lucky's win again. That's right, Lucky's win again in a national smoking survey among college students. Last year, a survey was made in leading colleges throughout the country which showed that smokers in those colleges preferred Lucky's to any other cigarette. This year, another nationwide survey was made, a representative survey of all students in regular colleges from coast to coast. Based on thousands of actual student interviews, this survey shows that Lucky's lead again, lead over all other brands, regular or king size, and by a wide margin. The number one reason this year as last, Lucky's better taste. Yes, Lucky's do taste better. First, because they're made of light, naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco. L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And then, Lucky's are made better, made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely, smoke evenly, actually made to taste better. After all, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. So be happy, go lucky, get better taste with a carton of Lucky's. Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike. The 
Rocky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, last Thursday was Thanksgiving, and Jack invited his whole gang over for dinner. But let's go back to the day before Thanksgiving. As we look in on Jack's home, he and Rochester are taking inventory to make sure that they have enough of everything for the big event. They're checking all the items in the pantry. As Rochester calls them off, Jack is writing them down. Two cans of corned beef hash. Two cans of corned beef hash. Three cans of cranberry sauce. Three cans of... Cranberry sauce. Two bottles of A1 sauce. Two bottles of A1 sauce. 97 bottles of olives. 90. Wait a minute, Rochester. Isn't that the same amount of olives that we had last year? Yeah, we don't use any since Phil Harris left the show. <laughs> oh, yes, Bob Crosby isn't a martini man. Continue, Rochester. Two bottles of vanilla extract. Two bottles of vanilla extract. One bottle of Lydia Pinkham's. <laughs> One bottle of Lydia Pinkham's. Twelve slices of white bread. Twelve slices of white bread. Seven slices of whole wheat bread. Seven slices of whole wheat bread. Oh, say, boss. What is it, Rochester? When we come to the toothpicks, let's just estimate. <laughs> Okay for the plain ones, but the colored ones will count. <laughs> now, let's finish this. Yes, sir. Six bottles of ketchup. Six bottles of ketchup. Six bottles of chili sauce. Six bottles of chili sauce. Three cans of Puss in Boots cat food. <laughs> Three cans of Puss in Boots cat food. Boss, why have we got that? I borrowed it from the Coleman's. But, but we haven't got a cat. Why did you borrow it? Well, they were out of butter, and I didn't want to leave empty-handed. <laughs> we'll use it someday. Continue. One sack of Idaho potatoes. One sack of Idaho... Rochester, answer the door. I'll finish the inventory. Yes, sir. Hello, Rochester. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Welcome to Ralph's Supermarket. <laughs> Uh, what? Come right in. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Uh, what are you doing up on that stool? I'll be finished in a minute. I'm just putting some stuff back on the top shelf. Would you please hand me those two jars of caviar? Oh, fine. Fish eggs from a frightened mackerel, and he calls it caviar. <laughs> Mary, why do you have to come over here? Jack, look out! The stool! The cans are falling! Uh, Jack, are you hurt? No, no, I'm all right. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> With those fish eggs in your ear, you look like you're going upstream to spawn. <laughs> upstream to spawn, upstream to spawn. A man nearly kills himself, and you talk about romance. <laughs> I don't care. Answer that, will you, please? Okay. Hello, Mr. Benny's residence. Hey, Mary, how come you're answering the phone? You got new clause in your contract? <laughs> no, Bob. Jack would have answered it, but he can't. He's lying on the floor. Oh, holy smoke, he's getting as bad as my musicians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it isn't that at all. He fell off a stool. Oh, well, that's what the boys in the band do. <laughs> Look, Bob, it's kind of hard to explain, but he fell while checking some stuff in the pantry. The pantry? Yeah, he's making sure he's enough of everything for his big Thanksgiving dinner. You're coming, aren't you? Oh, sure. I bought my ticket two weeks ago. <laughs> oh, that was smart. There's no sense waiting till the last minute when the scalpers get hold of them. <laughs> Uh, just a minute, Bob. I'll let you talk to Jack. Jack, it's Bob Crosby. I'll take it. Hello, Bob. 
Say, Jack, I wonder if you could give me a couple of extra tickets to next week's broadcast. Well, I might be able to scrape up two. Who are they for? Well, to tell you the truth, they're for Remley, but he was afraid to ask you. Well, he should be after what happened last time. He gave that ticket to his girl, and she almost started a riot in the studio. Imagine her walking up and down the aisle doing a thing like that. Oh, but that wasn't her fault, Jack. The band never should have played A Pretty Girl is Like a Melody. <laughs> All right, but where did she get the balloons? Where did she get the balloons? Where'd you get the pen? <laughs> Never mind. All right, Bob, I'll give you the tickets at rehearsal. Thank you, Jack. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bob always has to call me when I'm busy. Oh, Rochester. What is it, boss? I knocked over all these cans when I fell off the stool. Will you pick them up while I go on with the inventory? Yes, sir. Mary, will you please help me? I'll call off the items and you write them down. Oh, sure, Jack. Five bottles of vinegar. Five bottles of vinegar. Three bottles of real lemon juice. Three bottles of real lemon juice. Forty-five hundred cans of Minute Maid orange juice. <laughs> Forty-five hundred cans of Minute Maid orange juice. Wasn't that a wonderful guest spot I did on Bing's program? <laughs> I had to give 500 cans to my agent, you know. <laughs> now, let's keep going, Mary. One leg of lamb. One leg of lamb. Two packages of bacon. Two packages of bacon. One side of beef. Jack, that's me. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 hello, Don. Oh, Jack. Hi, Mary. Hello, Don. Jack, I know you're very busy, but I brought the sportsman quartet with me. They want to run over the commercial for the program. That's nice. And by the way, Don, I hope I didn't forget to invite you and the sportsman to Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, no, you invited us. Jack, I feel awfully popular this year. Popular? Yeah, beside your invitation, I've been invited to Harry Von Zell's house, Dinah Shore's house, and Jimmy Waddington's house for Thanksgiving dinner, too. Which one are you going to? All of them. <laughs> oh, silly me. Well, Don, I'm really kind of busy getting things ready for my dinner. Well, Jack, this commercial won't take very long, and it's in keeping with the Thanksgiving spirit. Oh, well, then let's hear it. All right. Take it, fellas. I thank you, my darling. I offer thanks to you, dear. Thanks for all the lovely delight I found in your embrace. I'm thankful, though I know it's ending all too soon. And thanks for unforgettable nights I never can replace. And memories that linger like a haunting tomb. It is better to have loved you dear and lost than never to have loved at all it is better for no matter what the cost i held the world in sway and ever for a day and thanks for all those luckies we share each puff a real delight now thanks to you a lucky is a small pie lie Quite a lucky, it's a fresher, smoother smoke that's made of fine tobacco, too. Puff a lucky, you like lucky's better taste, and there are no loose ends to ever annoy your friends. So thanks again for putting me wise to smoking paradise. For changing me to LSMFT, my thanks, I really thank you. Thanks for all those good old lucky strikes. That was great, Don. Very, very good. Ah, thanks, Jack. Well, guess I better be getting on home. Well, I'll walk to the door with you. Okay. Say, Don, I've been wanting to ask you something for a long time. What is it, Jack? Well, even though the sportsmen have been with me five years now, I never did find out how they formed their group. Funny, I've never asked you about that. That's quite an interesting story, Jack. It started up in Las Vegas, you Las see. Las Vegas? Yeah. Two of the boys were singing as a duet in the Flamingo, and two of them were singing as a duet at the Sahara. Uh-huh. And just by chance, they got together and formed a quartet. Well, I'll be darned. 
two and two. They made four the hard way. Didn't they? <laughs> well, so long, Don. See you and the boys Thursday. So long. Well, I better go back and finish the inventory. Say, Mary. Uh, just a minute, Jack. Go ahead, Rochester. Twelve cans of crushed pineapple. Twelve cans of crushed pineapple. Nineteen cans of condensed milk. Nineteen cans of condensed milk. Two thousand four hundred and fifty-six cans. Cans? <laughs> cans of what? Just cans. Mr. Benny, don't throw nothing away. <laughs> Certainly not. I, I, I paint them and hang them on Christmas trees. Now, Mary, I can finish this up with Rochester, so... Shall I answer it, boss? No, don't bother getting down from the stool. I'll answer it. I have to get this inventory finished before we... Oh, Mr. Benny, I just came over to ask you if oh, you... Oh, hello, would... Dennis. Hello. Mr. Benny, I just came over to ask you if you... How do you would... feel, kid? Fine. Mr. Benny, I just came over to ask you if you... Close would... the door, will you, Dennis? Okay. Now, Dennis, what did you... Dennis... How do you like that? He locked himself out. <laughs> oh, well. It just... Come in. Well, Mr. Benny, I just come over to ask you if it would be all right. Dennis, you when I told I... you to close the door, I meant you should come in first. Oh. <laughs> now, uh, what did you want to ask me? If I could use your phone, our house is on fire. <laughs> Now, Dennis, don't be silly. If your house is on fire, why would you come all the way to Beverly Hills to use the phone? I want the fireman to think I'm a big shot. <laughs> Dennis, close the door, will you? Just my luck. This time he stayed on the inside. Now, look, kid, I'm busy, so don't bother me with all these silly things you make up. Come on, Mayor, let's finish this inventory. Okay. Oh, is that what you're doing? Yes, yes. I thought you were cleaning house like my mother did the other day. I'm not cleaning house. Boy, did she get rid of a lot of stuff. She threw some old mm. curtains out of the living room, a broken rocking chair out of the bedroom, and she even took the moose head out of the shower. <laughs> now, Mary, let's... Dennis. <clears throat> Dennis. She took what out of the shower? The moose head. <laughs> You're going to ignore that, eh, Mary? I certainly am. <laughs> hmm. My father put it there, but my mother... Wait a mother... minute, Dennis. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold it a minute. I know I'll regret asking you this. <laughs> but why would your father put a moose head in the shower? The other end would look silly. That I can understand. Now, Dennis, besides your house being on fire and your father being in a shower with a moose, what else is new? Well, I've been rehearsing my song all week. Would you like to hear it? I'd love to. Anything. Go ahead. Okay. Hold it a minute, Dennis. Yes, sir. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Mel Blank. Oh, hello, Mel. What is it? Mr. Benny, I've been on your program for 10 years now, and I ain't never complained before, but this time I got her. What's the matter? It's about the part you got me playing in Sunday's show. Some part, oh, brother. Now, wait a minute, Mel. Sunday's program is about Thanksgiving, isn't it? Yeah. And what's the most important thing connected with Thanksgiving? A turkey. Well, that's the part you're playing. <laughs> well, I don't like it. Always you make me an animal. Why can't I have a talking part and be a human being? Look, Mel. Sometimes you make me a rabbit. A rabbit? Eh. What's up, Doc? Look, Mel. Or a woodpecker? Mel. Look, <laughs> look Mel. Mel, look, I'm busy. Once you even cast me as an English horse. An English horse? <laughs> Mel, I'm sorry, just that you have to play the parts that are needed. You may not realize it, Mr. Benny, but I'm pretty important to you. Important? Yeah, if it wasn't for me, you'd never get any place. 
What are you talking about? I wouldn't get any plays. Every time you start that lousy Maxwell, I almost break a blood vessel going... That's all the things I do on our program. Now I want some talking parts. I'm a human being. Now look, Mel, either you stop this complaining or I'll let you go. You wouldn't fire me. All right, all right. But Sunday, you're playing a turkey and that's final. Uh, what made you so mad at Mel, Jack? Oh, he's always complaining. I got a half a notion to fire him. You better not. He's too important to the show. Yeah, I guess you're right. Go ahead and sing, Dennis. Huh? Now, just sit down for a few minutes. I want to finish my inventory. We've got it all listed, boss, and you've got plenty of everything for the Thanksgiving dinner. Good. We won't have to do any shopping, then. How big a turkey did you get? Turkey? <laughs> I knew I forgot something. You mean you forgot to buy the turkey? Yeah, but there's still plenty of time. Well, don't wait till the last minute. You ought to go and get one right now. Well, will you go with me, Mary? Sure, let's go. I'll stay here. Good, good. <laughs> Gee, Mary, we're having, sure having a break in the weather lately. It's such a lovely day, you know? Yes, we usually do have good weather around Thanksgiving. Yeah. Oh, Mary, look over there at those boys playing football. Hey, Joey, kick it to me now. They're nice kids, Mary. They're in my Beverly Hills Beavers Club, you know? <laughs> the bigger one is Stevie Kent. His folks live on the corner. Every time I go for a walk, I stop and talk with him. Hey, Stevie, throw the ball over here. Huh? Oh, Mr. Benny, here it comes. Look out. I think it's too high. You'll have to run for it. Faster! You better jump for it! Wow! What a catch! Say, that was a good catch, Mary. How'd you do it? <laughs> I don't know, but you could buy me a new girdle for Christmas. I will, I will. See, Mr. Benny, you know, you haven't been to a single meeting of the Beavers Club since the 1st of September. I know, Stevie. It's unfortunate that you hold your meetings on Sunday afternoon because, you see, every Sunday I do a radio program and every third Sunday I do a television show. Oh. Well, you know you get fined a nickel for every meeting you miss. I know. 
I've been trying to get my broadcast changed. <laughs> well, we'll talk about it later. Come on, Mary, we better get down to the market. Gee, these supermarkets are so big, I always get lost in them. Jack, there's the poultry department over there. Oh, yes. Come on, Mary, let's walk over to the counter and we'll... Uh... Hello, Mr. Benny. Well, Mr. Kessler. Mr. Kessler, what are you doing working in the poultry department? Well, I got the job on account of my uncle. Oh, he owns the market? No, I owe him money. <laughs> Oh, well, look, Mr. Kitzel, I want to buy a turkey. Are they very expensive? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> you mean they're that high? Come here a minute. Huh? Step closer. <laughs> Do you know what turkeys are selling for today? No. Come a little closer. <laughs> Lean over a little. <laughs> what? 63 cents a pound. Well, why did you have to bring me over there? I don't want the turkeys to get conceited. <laughs> Gee, 63 cents a pound. That's a lot of money for turkeys. Say, they got to live too. <laughs> I suppose so. Say, Mary, look at those turkeys lying there, so cold and still. Just think, a few days ago, they were happy, carefree, and gay. And now they're 63 cents. I mean, now they're dead. <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, how old were these turkeys when they were killed? About eight months. Hmm. Didn't even have a chance to live. <laughs> I feel terrible. You'd feel a lot worse if they were 73 cents a pound. <laughs> I suppose so. But I don't know, Mary, when I see that turkey lying there like that, I, I can't help but think of its mother. Gee, how lonesome she must be. Don't worry, that's her laying right next to him. <laughs> oh. Uh, say, Jack, while you're getting the turkey, I better shop around and get some things for the stuffing. I think I have everything at home, Mary. Uh, what about cracker crumbs? Plenty. Stale bread? Two loaves. Oysters? One can. Sage? Thirty-nine. What? Oh, oh, I thought... <laughs> I thought you said age. I, mean, I thought... <laughs> yes, we have everything. Uh... Well, Mr. Benny, what's your pleasure if I can be so pleasant? Well... <laughs> I'd like to get a live turkey, about 25 pounds. Live turkeys are over there, down by the end of the counter. Oh, yes, yes. I think I'll take that one on the right. It looks nice and plump. Put on your glasses. That's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Sorry. I wish I could get 63 cents a pound for her. <laughs> What? Nothing, I'm daydreaming <laughs> Now, Mr. Kitzel, what would you suggest? Well, if you want a nice live turkey How is it about this one over here? <laughs> Say, Jack, this one's nice and plump Oh, I've seen turkeys look plump But they, they were all feathers I'm going to feel this one myself Hold still, turkey <laughs> You and your cold hands. <laughs> well, how much does this turkey weigh? About 160 pounds. I thought so. Why does this turkey weigh so much? He's also an English horse. <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, we'll take this turkey. Come on, turkey. Come on, I'll take you home. Come on, Mary. Jack, look out. The turkey's getting away. Quick, Mary, try to grab him. He's running out in the street. Jack, the car almost ran over the turkey and killed him. I'm sure glad it didn't. Mel Blanc is too important to this program. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Mary, let's go home.
Jack will be back in just a minute. But first, a word to cigarette smokers. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky's strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky strike. Lucky strike. Friends, if you've ever stopped to single out the one thing that gives you real smoking enjoyment, chances are that taste was your answer. Why, certainly. Smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's tastes so much better because, first, L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And then, too, Lucky's are actually made better. Made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly. And because Lucky's do taste better, they'll make wonderful Christmas gifts for your family and friends. So look for the bright and cheerful Lucky Strike Christmas carton, specially created by the famous designer Raymond Lowy. You'll find these Christmas cartons of Lucky's wherever you buy cigarettes. Yes, at Christmas time or any time, a carton of Lucky's is most welcome. For it's always good taste to give and to smoke. Better tasting Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky for Christmas gifts this year. Well, Rochester, the gang will be over this evening for Thanksgiving dinner. Is everything ready? Yes, sir. Then put the turkey in the oven. But, boss... Do as I say. Put the turkey in the oven. But, boss... Rochester, I'm telling you to put the turkey in the oven. Now, wait a minute. This has gone far enough. After all, I'm a human being. <laughs> oh, Mel, you spoil the whole illusion. Good night, folks. The Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, Al Gordon, Hal Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Be sure to hear The American Way with Horace Height for Lucky Strike every Thursday over this same station. Consult your newspaper for the time. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. <laughs>